I read on a forum recently where ScreenFlow is not capable of doing 3D text, and although I didn't immediately dismiss it, it did take me sort of a couple of weeks to figure out how I can actually do something 3D in ScreenFlow because the uh, person who wrote the post was uh, very experienced at After Effects and and that program is great it just has a high learning curve so those of us who use ScreenFlow you know day in and day out for our screencasts if we do want to make perhaps our own standard intro for a video series and we want you know kinda like a 3D effect this video is going to show you what I've accomplished so far in that regard not saying it's perfect 3D, but I have been sort of playing around with some of the elements and the shading and uh, basically seeing what I could accomplish with just a little bit of creativity. I'm sure I can come up with some other ideas and if you're watching this video and you understand a little bit more about 3D, well, by all means, send me a tweet on Twitter and tell me what I'm missing because I'd like to add some elements to this to make it really sort of feel 3D-like. But here's what I've got so far. I found this great a wallpaper background on uh, it was a free download on the internet and the size was great too because the resolution was far bigger than my standard 1280 by 720 video and I actually adjusted the color and shading of it as well so I have this in Photoshop as well as my plug or titling that I'm going to be using for this 3D project so I do have my text here and uh, I'm saving uh, the main title that I'm going to be using in the 3D as a high quality ping file so I have my background saved, I have my title saved, but I'm going to make another copy of this and save it as a different file, but on this copy of the title I'm going to change all the text to black and then I'm going to add a blur effect in Photoshop. After I add the blur effect I'm just going to remove the background and save the file as another pink file. It took me a while to play around with blurs, but I think I got something acceptable. Plus, I can further edit that in ScreenFlow too. I just need the proper sort of image file to start the project. Okay, so I have all those three images saved. And now what I'm going to do is just start a brand new ScreenFlow project, new empty document, Telestream. By the way, thank you for adding that in version 3.0. I love the capability that you can start a new empty document. It saves you from recording a little clip and then deleting it and start all over. So I'm just going to uh, uh, save that file and import all of my three images into ScreenFlow. So let's just start with the stage here. Now I'm going to bring in the track for my main title. So let's just add the uh, starting transition it's right in the middle so it fades in. Now I'm going to bring in the dark version of the text and create a layer behind the main title. There's a little bit of glow on it here so I can just go into the uh, video properties and completely lower the brightness. I'm also going to adjust the opacity here and we're just going to angle this so that it's sort of sitting below below the title right on the floor. At this point what I'm aiming for here is two separate shadows behind the main title so that when I put a video action on the title the shading behind it is going to move in a couple of different directions. We'll slip that row up above. So this shadow is going to be sort of right behind the titling and sort of extend from the back just like this when it starts to move. Again I'll blur it and I adjusted the brightness of it so that glow's gone. Drop the opacity a bit and I'll move it to the side and you know what I'll also make it a bit bigger so that it's sitting behind the title which hopefully represents some space between the title and the shading. All right, let's move ahead a little bit here. Okay, so I've added a video action to the wall in the back and it sort of just turns on an axis in a way. I'm probably gonna edit that later because I'm not sure if I've got the angles right, but we'll leave it as it is for now. Now the next step is to add video actions to my titling and the shading. So all I'm gonna do here is make some slight adjustments to the text. Uh, changing the axis, changing the size, and even shifting it over a little bit. 
Just going to play around with that. I'm not really looking for a drastic movement right now because this slight movement is going to go the length of the video, which means I can take that video action, like I am right now, and just slide it the length of that entire title. So as you can see, it's shifting a bit here, but I'm going to play with the size, bring it up, shift it a bit more. Okay, so after a few adjustments, it seems to be giving off the appearance of tilting and coming forward a little bit. So now I'll add a video action to the shadow underneath, and I'm using similar axis numbers, you know, under the video properties here. Well, I took that same number to shift it in the same motion as the titling, and I used it in the video action here so that it, you know, has some relative connection to what the actual title is doing. Uh, but because that shading is right behind the title, I'm going to expand and fade this off the back wall at the same time that the shadow is uh, doing other things underneath. It's starting to look pretty cool. I'm just going to make a few more adjustments. One of the things I notice is that the actual text, the titling, I can add a shadow behind it and I'm going to sort of firm it up so that the uh, letters, the text, actually look like they have more depth. And let me tell you, this is much better than my first attempt. I just sort of kept going back into ScreenFlow and adjusting those video actions so that the shading looked more, more and more realistic. Okay, so my first official attempt looks pretty good. But what I've done here is put a couple of loops together and I've created sort of a 10 second intro sound to accompany this 3D effect because the sounds you use can actually help the 3D effect too. So I'm just going to put that in here. I'm just going to shorten it a bit because I want the um, sort of the takeoff part to coordinate with the intro. So I'm just going to shorten the, shorten it here and you can see in the wave file where it gets a bit serious right there. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is actually turn the volume completely down and then add a volume action right near the start of the video of the audio track and go to 100% but I'm going to drag that right to the end. So there's a consistent build up of the audio track as the text is doing its stuff too. Let's have a look at that again. And then I put a natural sort of fade out for the uh, background track. Okay, so I've uploaded this 3D project. And what I was hoping is that anybody watching this video sort of dive into ScreenFlow and try and do something similar, more likely better than what I've done, just so that we can sort of pool our ideas together and see how we can sort of collaborate on, you know, getting a system together for creating some 3D text in ScreenFlow without it being sort of, you know, like hours and hours of work. I'd like to discuss this with you guys, so start tweeting your videos and uh, comment on the video on YouTube if you like. My Joomla guy is still trying to figure out how to do Twitter and Facebook comments on the blog, so sorry, you can't comment there yet, but hopefully soon. Okay then, let's talk soon. It's Marty at Combocast.com. Ciao. I get into my keynote presentation. I'm going to go to the inspector and under graphic I can select a border.